Thanks for stopping by CSEC Biology TCP. Today we're going to be looking at the Human and Social Biology Paper 2 for 2018. We're going to be looking at question number 5. Name three components of the human blood that are important in protecting the body against pathogenic diseases and state the function of each. This should be easy for a lot of persons. Phagocyte, lymphocyte, and platelets, or you might say thrombocytes for the platelet. Now, at a point of pathogen invasion, the phagocytes usually engulf the pathogen by phagocytosis. The lymphocytes, they will produce antibodies that are, of course, specific to the antigen of that pathogen and, of course, destroy the pathogen. The platelets, however, they will seal the wound by creating a clot, thus preventing any further blood loss and also ensuring that there is no further entry of pathogen into that wound or organism. For that, you would have received six marks. This question is about immunity, and it means, therefore, that you'd have to have a good grasp of immunity in order to, to treat with this question. Let me remind you that there is natural innate active immunity, and that's the immunity that is acquired or you are born with. It is, of course, inborn, innate. You are born with it. Then there is natural innate uh, passive immunity, and that is pretty much the immunity that is acquired from a mother through the placenta to the fetus or through breast milk or breastfeeding. Then there is natural acquired active immunity, and this is a type that comes uh, naturally having been exposed to the pathogen. Then there is the artificial types, artificial active acquired immunity, and this pretty much includes the taking of vaccines to, of course, build that immunity. The antibodies here are, of course, produced by the vaccine. Then we have the artificial passive acquired immunity, which is usually given to an individual that is that has not been vaccinated and has been exposed to a pathogen that needs it, or a person who would have had a snake bite. But this type of immunity is short-lived, but it acts very quickly. So if you were supposed to be exposed to tetanus, that type of a thing, um, you'd be given an anti-serum, right, or a snake bite to deal with that very, very quickly. I should also point out that that uh, immunity that is acquired from the mother, which is a natural innate passive immunity, that type of immunity is also short-lived, but very important for the baby, being that the baby does not produce antibodies. Let's look at the question. Miriam, a one-month-old baby, acquires immunity from her mother through breastfeeding. Miriam, fathers accidentally punctures his finger with a nail but does not need a tetanus antiserum. Now, this is going to be artificial if you were supposed to get that injection because he received a tetanus vaccine the previous year. Remember, we said that vaccines are artificial, active, acquired immunity. Now, explain how the type of immunity that Marian acquired from breastfeeding differ from the type of immunity that her father acquired from the vaccine. Uh, in your explanation, state the name. So let us start out with the type of immunity for the baby. So Marian is uh, would have acquired natural innate passive immunity, while her father would have acquired artificial active 
acquired immunity. Now there are two words to look at here. The natural, meaning that it's straight organic, it's not done by man. Artificial here, it is done by man. Passive for the baby, got it from mom, so it's passed down from the parent. And active here, meaning that the antibodies, of course, are going to be developed into the father. So it is, the vaccine would have been injected and there the further antibodies would have been made within the father. Now, Miriam, immunity is natural. Hence, it was not created by man and the antibodies were developed within mom and passed in passive to the baby. It is a short-lived protection. In the case of a father, the, the immunity is artificial, hence man-made. Here, antibodies are produced by a vaccine, which is a weakened strain of a pathogen. This is administered to the father, causing more antibodies to be produced by his body. Now, the protection is our protection may be long term here for this case. So, while the baby uh, protection is somewhat short lived, the father's protection might be long term. The authorities prevent children who are not immunized from registering in public schools. So, there's two reasons why some parents may have a valid concern about immunizing their children and two reasons why the authorities maintain their position on preventing the entry of unvaccinated children. Now, parents, the child might have underlying illness that the vaccine may worsen. Two, the parents may have a religious belief that are against the introduction of a pathogen to themselves or child, as is the case with Jehovah Witness who are not into the whole idea of a blood transfusion. Correct me if it's not so in the chat below. Government, the pathogen might be contagious and the child that is not vaccinated may pass the pathogen on to other student in if that child becomes infected. If there is a breakout of a disease, it could cause strain on the healthcare system and eventually strain on the economy. That brings us to the end of the questions. Please be reminded to like, share, and subscribe. And when you subscribe, click that notification bell. And of course, select all. Please be reminded to join us on a Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 5.05 from Kingston, Jamaica for live classes. Until next time, all the best.